Yeah, again, you know, it's been a long, long time since I was there, 50 sure. years plus. But some of the things that stick in my mind, the memories that are imp imp implanted in there was the uh, jungles. And by that, they were thick. They got to be real thick at times. And I can remember one time going through the jungle and uh, they had these big red ants over there. And these things were like carnivorous. And they had big, uh, like, leaves that they would weave into a nest. And uh, I was, I think I was on point or something that particular day. We were actually having to crawl to get through some of the areas. And I ran into one of the uh, ant nests. Oh. And uh, man, I tell you what, I never stripped so fast in my life. <laughs> there were other people that were over there helping, like beat the beat these damn things, uh, get them off my body, and that they just attacked. They were uh, they were aggressive, <laughs> and as you can see, I don't. I, I remember a lot of the good stuff is or the funny stuff that happened. Sure, right? sure. That's more, a lot yeah. of guys are like that for sure. So it was, yeah. uh, it was an, and that was interesting. There are several other stories that, uh, <laughs> that I could tell you that, I, that, you know, these were the funny things that I did. I remember Please, one time. Yeah, for sure. They, we were in a base camp and this is when I was with a line unit and we were in a base camp and, uh, every time you moved into a different place, you had, they rotated digging the 50 hole. Because a 50 caliber hole was a big asshole. Yeah. And you had to, it took forever. So I remember myself and these two other guys, we were digging this thing. And in, in, in the, in the uh, dry season, the, the freaking ground got just like cement. And all we had was e tools and stuff like that. So we're trying to dig this hole and it's like digging cement. Yeah. So we get this bright idea. We're going to, get some C4 and we're going to blast the hole and loosen everything <laughs> up. So we get, we dig a hole at probably maybe a, a foot deep and maybe, I don't know, maybe eight, 10 inches wide. We stuff as much C4 in there as we can. And this is, the, this is where the battalion had moved into these, uh, this area. And we yelled fire in the hole and we got behind something. I don't know what it was, but we pushed the plunger and man, we had way too much C4 in there. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll never remember. The first sergeant came running down. I'll always remember, I should say. The first sergeant came running down. We actually blew the battalion CP tent down and had some <laughs> holes put in it from the, from the rocks. And uh, we still, and the funny part was we got done, we walked over, we looked at it, and we had about a crater uh, that was about 10 feet wide and about six inches deep. So we had to, <laughs> continue to dig that damn thing all day long. And we got in trouble for that one. That was a good one, too. And oh, yeah. <laughs> the first time, for me, this was something. You, you, you never know what you don't know. And the first time I got, sh got shot at over there... <laughs> We were, I was out on a, uh, with a guy and we were out on an ambush and uh, well, there were more of us, obviously, but we were out on an ambush and uh, we got found. So uh, I had, uh, this is, this, this is a good one, but they, they issued us uh, when we went out on these, they issued us uh, Benny's, Benzedrine to keep okay. awake at night because there were only 60 out there. And uh <clears throat> <laughs> and uh i remember we took i took a benzedrine I, I had never taken any drugs before in my life i came from a small town in wisconsin and uh they said if you get sleepy take one of these and you'll stay awake so i thought okay that's fine and uh so i, I they asked me how many you want i had never had any drugs before so i said well give me about a half dozen and <laughs> he said <laughs> So I took one and I, I was still sleepy. So I took another one. I think I ended up taking like three bennies. And uh, finally the guy, uh, I was time to switch. Uh, there were two man positions, yeah. time, time to switch. And I woke the guy up next to me and he's like, he was an old guy. Old guy had been there a long time. 
And I said, it's, it's your, I'm not tired because by now I was, the Bennies had kicked in and I was right. listening to Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Cup Band and I was seeing Dumbo flying through the skies and shit <laughs> like that. And uh, he, I said, I'm not tired, but you know, here you go. And I laid down and he took a watch and I, I swear, I don't know exactly where, how long time was not a factor at that point, but uh he, he woke me up and he said, we got, when they didn't wake me up, I was awake. He just re reached over there and said, we got movement. I thought, okay. And about then the claymore, claymores all went off. And I went from the horizontal to the vertical. I stood straight up in the middle of all that shit going on. And he grabbed me and pulled, this was my first time under fire. He pulled me down and he said, if you ever do that again and give away our position, I'll shoot you. So, uh, <laughs> so that was my reaction the first time under fire. I never did it again, by the way, but nice. uh, that was my first reaction under fire. So those were some of the fun, funny stories I got. You know, I remember the, the good stuff. I yeah, talk yeah. about the good stuff. I, For sure. That, that's what I do to try to get through it. Yeah, so yeah, those, yeah. those were some of the things in Vietnam. But uh, I know... After I went through Wakanda school, I got back and they, they taught us tracking. They taught us how to walk through the woods and how to be quiet, etc. So we went out on a, uh, a mission and I was on point because they wanted to see what the new guy would do. And I was doing things exactly the way we had been taught how mm -hmm. to do it. Move slowly through the, uh, through the jungle and uh, evidently, uh, I wasn't moving fast enough, but the guy, the patrol or the uh, leader of the uh, unit at that time said, you need to pick it up, which made me feel uncomfortable because yeah. this isn't how I was taught to do it. But he had been there longer than I was. So I thought, OK, I'll pick it up. So we got out, we set up and uh, this was very interesting. We set up in single man positions. And uh, I don't know why, but somehow we got compromised. And uh, one of the ways they used to communicate was they would tap sticks together okay. to let them know where they were. But I could I could hear this tapping off to my left, and I'm figuring, okay, how long am I going to wait till I, you know, am I going to see them, or what am I going to do, or how is this all going to play out? So you're processing your movements at the time, how you're going to address what's going to happen. And all of a sudden, again, this wasn't claymores. It was a couple of grenades went off. We had a rally point. And uh, uh, so it was like, okay, fine. I don't have to worry about this guy because we're all moving out to the rally point. We, re we got back to the rally point and we were missing a guy. Oh, no. So uh, we had to go back and, get him we found him he had a sucking chest wound we got him out got him back he went to the hospital got better and uh was just a small piece of shrapnel that had penetrated but uh wow. got him out and uh that uh that time you did you that time you're not sure you're scared what you're doing is you're just planning for what your next move is processing what's going on and what are the what are the moves you're going to make to address the situation that you're in at this point in time and slowing down everything and thinking thinking through it and reacting the way you've been trained if, if anything that i've learned throughout my military career and now with my civilian career that i've been in for a while it's you will you will no matter what you will do exactly what you do in training. I don't give a hoot what it is, especially under high stress situations. Hey.